Hello everyone! This is Taylor from the Marathon County Public Library and we are here for another story time. Today our story time is all about cats. So we might see some house cats, but then we'll also see some cats out in the wilderness. What kind of cats can you think of? Different big cats. We're going to see some in our first book. So let's dive in to our first story. Our first book today is I Am a Cat by Galia Bernstein. So remember when I asked you to look at all the different kinds of cats and what kind of cats there are? Let's see. Here is Simon. He is a house cat. Hello, my name is Simon. I am a cat, just like you. What? Look at all those big cats. <laughs> a cat, said Lion. Don't be silly, dear boy. You can't be a cat because I am a cat. And you are nothing like me at all. Cats have a mane and a tuft at the end of their tails. And when they roar, everybody trembles for they are the kings of all beasts. A cat, said Cheetah, but you are so short. Cats are tall and graceful creatures who run faster than all the animals in the world. You don't look like you run very fast at all. A cat, said Puma, that's ridiculous. Cats live in the mountains. That's why people call us mountain lions. They leap far, jump high, and act tough. I know fuzzy little rabbits that look tougher than you. A cat! Cats are black, said Panther. They live in jungles and rainforests and sleep in trees. Have you ever even seen a jungle? A cat, said Tiger. That's very funny. You see, cats are very big and very strong and very, very orange. You are small and gray. You might be some kind of rat, but a cat? I don't think so. Simon was confused. Okay, lion is the only one with a mane, he said. No one else is black like panther or orange like tiger. No one else can jump as high as puma or can run as fast as cheetah. So how can you all be cats? Because we also have many things in common, said lion. We all have small perky ears and flat noses, long whiskers and long tails. We have sharp teeth and claws and big eyes that can see in the dark. They glow, look at those. So do I, said Simon. I have all those things, only smaller. They all leaned in for a closer look. Ah, said Lion. Oh, said Puma. Um, in that case, said Panther. Er, it's very possible that, said Tiger. You are a cat, said Cheetah. So, I'm part of the family, asked Simon. The big cats looked at one another. Yes, they all said together. So they are all more alike than they are different. They spent the rest of the day pouncing and prowling prancing and playing like cats of all sizes do. Okay, so that was our first book called I Am A Cat. So we learned what cats look like. They might have small perky ears, flat noses, whiskers and tails and sharp claws. So in our next book, we're gonna learn about a whole bunch of different words to describe a cat. Hi everybody, it's Tara here. I'm bringing you a rhyme about kitty cats. I hope you enjoyed the stories that Taylor's been reading to you. And this rhyme is going to start on a warm and sunny day. Now to show warm and sunny, can you take your hands and make a circle above your head? This is gonna be our sun, okay? All right, do you know the word enormous? 
Enormous is another word for big, except really big. And so these kitty cats are gonna have some really big fun out in the warm sun. So if you can show me one finger, we're gonna get started with our first little kitty. One little kitty went out to play on a warm and sunny day. He had such enormous fun that he called for another little kitty to come. Now, can you cup your hands around your mouth and say, here, kitty, kitty. All right. And then we're going to have a little pitter, patter, pitter, patter of the kitty running. And here comes kitty number two. What color is kitty number two? Orange. We didn't even say what the first color was. That one's pink. All right. So now we have two little kitties. Two little kitties went out to play on a warm and sunny day. They had such enormous fun that they called for another little kitty to come. Remember to cup your mouth. Here, kitty, kitty. Better, 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 better. And here comes kitty number three. Kitty number three is yellow, like the inside of the sun here. Three little kitties went out to play on a warm and sunny day, they had such enormous fun that they called for another little kitty to come. Here, kitty, kitty. Pitter, patter, pitter, patter, pitter, patter. And here comes kitty number four. Four little kitties went out to play on a warm and sunny day. They had such enormous fun that they called for another little kitty to come. Here, kitty, kitty. Pitter, patter, pitter, patter, pitter, patter. And here comes our last little kitty. Kitty number five is a purple kitty cat. Five little kitties went out to play on a warm and sunny day. They had such enormous fun that they played all day till the day was done. Oh, bravo, everybody. I hope that you enjoyed that, and I hope you enjoy our next story from Taylor. Bye-bye. In this book, we are going to learn about a whole bunch of different words that describe a cat. These are also known as adjectives. So what can you think of that describes a cat? Maybe sleepy or fuzzy? So let's find out in the bookstore cat. We're also going to go through our ABCs, so A through Z of words that describe cats. The bookstore cat is an adorable cat. A. The bookstore cat is a bossy cat. Very bossy. B. He's also a cuddly cat. The bookstore cat is a darting cat. An excited cat, a friendly cat. The bookstore cat is a gorgeous cat, though of course he's also a humble cat. An intelligent cat and a jealous cat. The dog's getting all the attention. Sometimes he acts like a kittenish cat, very playful but he is always a loyal cat. The bookstore cat is a mysterious cat when he's not a naughty cat, pushing the plants over, spilling stuff everywhere. He knows how to be an obedient cat or a very, very patient cat. Getting all the pets from all the kids. The bookstore cat is a quick cat and a regal cat. What do you think regal means? We're going to find out in our next segment. And a sleepy, oh so sleepy cat. After a nap, he's a thirsty cat. Uh oh, the bookstore cat is an underwater cat and a vocal cat. Cats don't like water, do they? He is meowing up a storm. The bookstore cat is a waiting, waiting, waiting cat. Pounce! He's a Xenops chasing cat. That bird there is a Xenops with an X. The bookstore cat is a yucky cat. Ew! He's wet and dirty. 
Good thing cats like to be clean. So there he is, taking a bath. Now the bookstore cat is nice and clean. By closing time, he's a zigzag cat. The bookstore cat is all of these from A to Z. But most important of all, he is the bookstore cat. Okay, so that was our second book called The Bookstore Cat. Lots of different words to describe him. So now we are gonna head on down to the aquarium and learn about a regal fish. Hey there, it's Dan, and I'm in front of the Phyllis Donner Aquarium here at the Marathon County Public Library. In our last story, we saw the bookstore cat refer to himself as a regal cat. But what exactly does that mean? Well, regal means royal, so like a king or a queen or a prince or a princess. And we have a royal fish here in our aquarium called the royal grama. So let's dive in and take a look at this beautiful fish. Royal gramas, also known as the fairy basslet, are small but incredibly beautiful tropical fish. The front half of their body is iridescent purple, which blends into a golden yellow or light orange color on their back, almost like a gorgeous sunset. They also usually have a small black dot on their dorsal fin. These fish are called royal because of their purple coloring. Purple is often considered to be a regal color. They're very peaceful, friendly fish which makes them good inhabitants for our aquarium. In their native habitat, royal gramas are found in the Atlantic Ocean around Central America, in the northern part of South America, and in some parts of the Caribbean. They like crevices to hide in when they feel like they're in danger, like rocks, coral, and small caves. Royal gramas like to eat bits of crustaceans like shrimp, small parasites, and zooplankton, which are small, microscopic organisms. Royal gramas are usually around three inches in size and generally live between three and five years. Thanks again for joining me today. Let's go back to Miss Taylor for another story. Our last book is called No Fuzzball by Isabella Kung. Okay, so we learned about the term regal today. No fuzzball is very regal. Look, she looks just like a queen in her beautiful tiara and necklace. So let's learn about no fuzzball. Hello, I am no fuzzball. Perhaps you've never heard a name like this before, but that is because you have not met a queen like me. My subjects worship me. Hear how they yell my name everywhere I go. No, fuzzball! We live in my queendom in total harmony. See how my subjects do all my bidding? They entertain me, feed me, groom me, massage me, and shower me with presents. Ooh, look! A new gift! What a perfect queen-size bed! What is that really? Looks like a suitcase. I wonder if they're going on a trip. No, fuzzball! Get out of the suitcase. Ugh, sometimes they can be a little too clingy. And they messed up my royal coat. A queen cannot tolerate such disrespect. I demand a formal apology. Wait, they left? How dare they forget their place? What has gotten into them? Ah, yes, of course. My subjects must be so ashamed of their behavior, they went to find the perfect royal offerings for me. Glad they took that disgusting, slobbering mess too. The dog. Finally, some peace and quiet. Time for some uninterrupted beauty sleep. How regal. That nap was divine. Now, where is that personal masseuse of mine? She knows I must have my daily massages. Hello, I'm awake now. 
They are still gone? Where did they go? Are they in the toilet? In the shower? They have never been away this long. They are not that smart. What if they are lost or hurt? Maybe someone captured them. What if they don't want to live in my queendom anymore? Poor no fuzzball. I know, I will be a charitable ruler. I will make them the finest beds, share my fanciest toys, spoil them with the greatest gifts. Nothing is too good for my subjects. They are family. No fuzzballs, kind of making a mess. I'll need to redecorate the palace too. I must redesign the racetrack, carve out the best napping areas, and freshen things up with my signature style. Do you think they're gonna be happy when they come home? Let's see. They are going to love my royal renovations. <gasps> what is that noise? My subjects have returned home. Fuzzball. Wait, what did they call me? Has it been so long? Oh, they have forgotten their queen's name. Oh. No, Fuzzball. Oh, never mind. They love me. Okay, so that was our last book called No Fuzzball. I hope you enjoyed our stories today and we will see you next time.